Tonight on Cougar News, a hate group is stirring up trouble in the SCV. Plus, you won't have to go far anymore to see your favorite aquatic creatures. Also, COC baseball is in full swing. Cougar News starts now. This is Cougar News. Hello, and welcome to Cougar News. I'm Darren Inori. And I'm Skylar Barty. Here's the latest from the Cougar Newsroom. Tonight, we start with breaking news. The first case of the measles was reported here in the Santa Clarita Valley this afternoon. According to SantaClarita.com, a preschooler was diagnosed with the measles and may have exposed others. The parent of the child have complained that LA County health officials have been slow to notify the public of the exposure. The exposure likely happened at a medical office building located at 28212 Kelly Johnson Parkway. SantaClarita.com also reports the child was, the, uh, was in the building for about three hours on February 24th. According to public health officials, the measles virus can live on its own for up to two hours, which expands the possible exposure window to February 25th. It started at California State University's and has now made its way to the Community College District. Cougar News' Enzo Marino reports on the Yes Means Yes law and its new guidelines for sexually active students. Senate Bill 967, otherwise known as the Yes Means Yes initiative, will be addressed by College of the Canyons. Signed by Governor Jerry Brown in September of 2014, the Yes Means Yes law changes the guidelines for state-funded colleges that are investigating charges of sexual assault. It was introduced in an attempt to curb what the White House has called an epidemic on U.S. college campuses. According to the new law, students engaging in sexual activity are obligated to affirmatively voice their consent. It says that consent must be sober, voluntary, conscious, and ongoing throughout the sexual activity. The law also states that silence and lack of resistance do not constitute consent. Vice President of Student Services at College of the Canyons, Michael Wilding, spoke to us about what yes means yes means for students. Basically what it's saying is affirmative consent throughout the encounter. Absent that, you could be accused of sexual assault. Clearly, it's, it's designed to protect um, victims, um, you know, future victims at, at a higher level. And then on the back end, it makes it harder for the accused student to uh, make a defense, which was she didn't say no or I didn't know. While some students agree with the new law. Overall, it's going to help us more than it would, uh, wouldn't help us, I guess. Others are not as optimistic. I feel like it's going to cause more problem than, than good. Officials at COC will continue to discuss the Yes Means Yes initiative in multiple meetings throughout the spring semester. For Cougar News, I'm Enzo Marino. Hundreds have been exposed to a deadly drug-resistant superbacteria at a local hospital. This ec epidemic has led to an open discussion on preventative practices. Reporter Raina Harvey has the latest. <laughs> Two people have died and close to 200 others have been exposed to a drug-resistant superbug, CRE. The outbreak of the deadly bacteria took place at the UCLA Ronald Reagan Medical Center, less than 30 miles away from College of the Canyons. The recent epidemic and lack of knowledge about the bacteria has brought worry to the local community. It's a little disappointing in the sense that I like, I like living across the street from Reagan and knowing that that's a safe and reliable hospital for so many people and learning that um, there was just kind of a malfunction in the system is a little discouraging in the sense that I like the community, community to be like running smoothly. But the CRE bacterium flare-up has opened up conversations on our own campus on how to stay on the lookout for potentially harmful bacteria. Well, normally they would probably exist in the host, in the, in the person or the, the animal, but they can sometimes survive on surfaces. It depends on the surface. If the surface is a dry surface, like a, a desktop, they're not going to survive as long. If it's a, sometimes if it's a metal surface, like a doorknob, we always worry about doorknobs. Um, those metals sometimes actually inhibit bacteria. If it's in a moist surface, then it could survive longer. So what do professionals say is the most preventative measure for protecting yourself against deadly bacteria? Wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. Hand washing is the number one prevention for infectious disease. I'm Raina Harvey reporting for Cougar News. 
With the measles outbreak still on the rise in the United States, CDC is encouraging you to get your vaccinations. Even if you have been vaccinated, it is still important to make sure you are immune to the disease. Cougar News reporter Alyssa Dickert took a trip to COC's Student Health and Wellness Center to find out what our college has to offer. The measles outbreak that began at Disneyland has now spread to 17 states with 130 cases in California alone. This highly contagious disease puts those who have not received the vaccine at risk. It can be contagious a couple of days before that rash ever breaks out. And you're coughing and you're dropping and you're touching things. And if that, that virus can stay there viable and think about it on all the handrails and then you go and you touch your eyes or your nose or your lips, mm -hmm. you just inoculated yourself with measles. So the people that don't have the measles, mumps, rubella vaccine are at risk of getting measles and then spreading measles. To give you an idea of how easily you can catch measles, imagine that this is the virus. We all know that it's spread through coughing and sneezing, but infectious disease experts say that it can be suspended in the air for up to two hours and travel the length of a basketball court. In the year 2000, we wiped out measles in the United States, but it's coming back because the world is such a small place. We're on planes and we're bringing it back and people aren't getting immunized and now we got it back again. The Student Health and Wellness Center here at COC can test to see if you're still immune to the disease and provides measles vaccinations. Probably $40. Again, it's a live virus. So you can't be sick, you can't be pregnant. If you think you're at risk, be sure to stop by the Student Health Center. Reporting for Cougar News, I'm Melissa Dickert. So there's a lot of heavy news coming out right now. What's really been going on? There has been in both our city, in California, and especially globally. This past Sunday, a shooting took place in downtown LA on Skid Row involving police officers and a homeless man. Being called out on a robbery, LAPD officers responded to the aggressor, Charlie Satterman Robinette, a past convicted criminal for armed robbery. In the disturbance on a sidewalk, four officers latched onto Robinette. Not clearly knowing the exact reason for shooting, five shots were fired, killing Robinette on the side of the road. One bystander filmed the struggle and immediately uploaded it onto the web, instantly becoming viral. Chief Charlie Beck has come out with a statement that the two of the officers were wearing body cameras, yet the film has not been released until further review. In other news, Russian politician and fierce opponent of President Vladimir Putin, Boris Nemtsov, was murdered on a bridge near the Kremlin Wall on Friday night. No arrests have been made, but Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny stated, I believe that Nemtsov was murdered by members of government special services or pro-government organization on the order of the country's political leadership, including Vladimir Putin. Though, Santa Clarita, did you know that every day there is at least one car break-in in the SUV? In response, the city of Santa Clarita Sheriff's Station has now launched the new program, Lock It or Lose It. The basis of this program is to remind the community to not leave valuables in your car, as well as always remembering to lock it every time you leave. Thieves look for cars that seem valuable, so they want to remind us all to please keep everything and anything valuable out of the car or out of sight. And that's what's trending. I'm Georgia Rios. For more stories in and around the Santa Clarita Valley, you can check us out at cougarnews.com. Back to you, Skylar. Thank you. California State University Northridge might be making changes to their admissions process for transfer students. Will it affect COC students? Cougar News reporter Judith Rotana tells us more. Forty thousand one hundred thirty-one. That could be the population of a small town, but it's the number of students enrolled at California State University Northridge last year. The university has announced a proposal to try to reduce enrollment. The plan is to cut admission by 1%, roughly 300 students, every year for the next four years. One of the proposed ways is through limiting where transfer students are pulled from. Media Relations Director Carmen Chandler explains the changes. That, oh, we have traditionally kind of looked the other way and accepted students from wherever Southern California that want to come here. So what we're going to do is kind of contract that a little bit and focus on those communities that we're supposed to be serving. The plan is to create a local area that would include 17 community colleges, including College of the Canyons, from which the university would accept transfer students. Here at College of the Canyons, some students think that focusing on local community colleges is a positive change. 
So to know that it's still a priority school is really good, especially for CSUN, because I know there are a lot of students who transfer in from the Valley area in Northridge and come out here, and to have those be able to transfer back to a school that's close to home is really important. There are those, however, who think it might be unfair to some students, like COC professor Mary Peterson. Maybe it limits students' possibilities. I'm starting to think maybe I don't like the idea because it limits students' options about where they can transfer. It just tunnel visions them into one CSU. The university has scheduled a series of public hearings addressing the changes in admission, the first of which will take place on Thursday, March 5th, here on the CSUN campus. In Northridge, this is Judith Rotana, Cougar News. The controversial Westboro Baptist Church has been stirring up trouble in the SCV. I was there to take a closer look. Love not hate! Love not hate! 200 strong from the Santa Clarita Valley came together united to show support for one another. We hope that our community recognizes that we're not here to disrupt things, it's just to bring it back to its peaceful um, serenity that we have on a regular basis. So and we didn't want them to come here and, and no one come to unite and to tell them that they're not welcome. All the way from Kansas, the Westboro Baptist Church came to the Santa Creta Valley to show their disapproval of five local churches on Sunday. Local churches were targeted for having female pastors and what Westboro claims are scriptural standards. After making their rounds, Westboro Church eventually left to continue their protests at their annual stop, the Oscars. For Cougar News, I'm Darren Inori. College of the Canyon chefs have a new home. Our own Heather Harbin gave us a quick look at the new Culinary Arts Building. College of the Canyons opened its state-of-the-art Culinary Arts Building here on the Valencia campus. This will provide a new, affordable way for culinary students to receive a top-notch education. This means that if people want to explore this field, they can do so without creating this albatross of debt that follows them forever. So for me, it's an opportunity for the students to pursue this in a manner in which they otherwise couldn't. The new culinary arts building has five different kitchens, including a sweets kitchen where students will be able to purchase fresh baked goods daily, like these cookies here. I think that we are probably going to be top five in Los Angeles for sure. We want to make this a model for culinary arts and wine studies. So um, I know they're going to be successful. We have fabulous instructors. Um, we are passionate about what we do. And I think that it resonates with the students. With the building being closer to home, students find it easier to learn even more than they had before. I look at cooking as kind of a roadmap where you plan a trip. Now, I'm looking to take the side trips, what I didn't know about just following the recipe. The classes have already begun and are still looking for future chefs to enroll. For Cougar News, Heather Harbin. March 14th might be the day you start your career path. Our own Ariel Thompson has more about COC's upcoming Media Day. Once again, College of the Canyons is having Media Day, and this is a great way to figure out if you belong in the media industry as you get older. It's an opportunity to kind of just listen to, to professionals and get four different opportunities to kind of hear from people. You also might recognize some people you see on TV or behind the scenes, but of course, it has to stay a surprise. Folks that work in the entertainment industry, work in journalism and, and everything in between, is that they love to, to come back and pay it forward. And finally, I got the courage up. Professionals get to talk about what they had to go through to get where they are today. People that take advantage of this opportunity because it's really a chance to be one-on-one -on -one with people that you know really can, can, can give you good advice. But over time, it all just kind of falls into place. Students will fill the halls to listen to industry professionals. And for some, this could be the start of their career. For Cougar News, I'm Ariel Thompson. With crude oil on the rise, a domino effect is taking place, and many are feeling the pinch. Cougar News reporter Fred Luna has some tips that could help out your wallet. The pain at the pump is creeping back into our wallets and devouring our bank accounts one gallon at a time. That is why I have some possible remedies that will make your gas go a lot further this semester. 
California gas prices have hit an average of 3.03 a gallon last Wednesday, the first time they've exceeded $3 since last Christmas. As the price of oil increases, so does everything else. Students are finding it more difficult to fund their education and stay focused on their studies instead of working. I asked one student if the change in gas prices affected her schooling and the ability for her to further her education. I do feel that the rise in gas prices has affected my education because now more of my money is going to gas rather than things that I can use to further my education, such as books and supplies and other things. So what can students do in order to save as much gas as possible? Why don't we take a look? You want to make sure you have the right air pressure because doing so will ensure that your tires wear longer, you save fuel, enhance handling, and prevent accidents. Next, you want to make sure that when approaching the freeway, you ride with your windows up in order to reduce drag and become more aerodynamic. Lastly, if you have a minute or two, make sure to check GasBuddy.com for the latest and cheapest gas prices around your area. Once again, reporting for Cougar News, this is Fred Luna. Back to you guys. Coming up on Cougar News, West Ranch students get a first-hand experience of the consequences of drinking and driving. Plus, a legendary actor moves on after a very prosperous life. Stay tuned. When you're in the mood for endless Italian dishes, Vincenzo's Pizza is your one-stop shop. From their hand-tossed thin crust pizzas, to their meaty Chicago dogs and their toasty sandwiches, to their creamy chicken alfredo pasta. I love their chicken alfredo pasta. Vincenzo's New Hall has exactly what your appetite desires. With fresh ingredients, 12 cold beers on tap, and live entertainment on the weekend, you will not be disappointed. Vincenzo's Pizza, inch for inch, the best pizza in the Santa Clarita Valley. Habitat for Heroes. Really, it's a story about people. Letting people see that they're not alone, they're not isolated. We're here to help, and we need to work on behalf of our veterans. Then we can really change that veteran's ability to reintegrate into the community. Habitat for Heroes is not just rebuilding homes, but it's rebuilding lives. And that's the message we want to get across. Get involved. Visit HabitatSCV.org and find out how you can help. A man is taking his personal tragedy to inspire people one step at a time. Antonio Curiel tells us more. In the morning of February 1st, 2012, Cole Petty found his brother Nigel dead in his home after a heroin overdose, leaving Cole in a state of disbelief. All I was doing to myself the past month after it happened was sitting in my room, driving myself crazy, replaying the moment that morning in my head all over again. After several years in the dark, the help of his family would get Cole to come back into the light. And once he stepped in, he realized that other people have been through similar experiences. He felt the need to share his story, so he made up the nonprofit organization Recycle Your Possibilities in an attempt to raise awareness to help people realize, remember, and be aware that right now, in any moment, there is a possibility for new beginnings, hope, and change. March 14th is the day Cole starts his Walk for Change and will connect with people, communities, and businesses, sharing the inspiration and hope that everything is possible. And I figured what better way than to do something so crazy, unrealistic, to walk across the country, to walk around the country 18,000 miles. And I figured what, what better way to show that everything's possible, that whatever we want to set our mind to, we can do we can accomplish. For Cougar News, Antonio Curiel. Some of the best places to learn about marine life are SeaWorld and the Long Beach Aquarium. But did you know Santa Clarita has an aquarium of its own? Nick Viverka has more. Here, they'll, they'll suck it in. If you're looking to get up close and personal with aquatic wildlife, you don't have to look much further than the Newhall Aquarium. 
a truly unique establishment for the Santa Clarita Valley. I have been doing aquariums for a while. I do maintenance and installation as a company. I have a degree in marine biology and I studied, um, uh, I have a four year degree, I studied at UCSB, so I came out, started working for a few public aquariums, smaller ones, um, and uh, got into the kind of the installation and, and maintenance business, and so I learned about tanks and, and uh, uh, keeping animals alive, you know, with uh, so life support systems. And uh, so basically I put the two together and I was able to open something like this. Despite its small size, the New Hall Aquarium is home to some impressive equipment and species. We have different ecosystems here. We have a couple of cold water, well, a couple of tropical water tanks and then I think you know, one major cold water system. That's the one with the sharks. And that one's kind of, there's two tanks connected, the, the acrylic one and then the, the tub. Um, and those are local California you know, species like groupers and sharks and stingrays, things you'd find in offshore in California. The aquarium's operations are small for now, but that could change someday. We're definitely talking to different, you know, people that are considering sponsoring us to get something bigger, you know. We don't know how that's going to go or where that's going to go yet, but um, I think it, it'll probably end up going somewhere, you know, where it's a little bit more large, mean, big scale, larger scale, you know, um, eventually. So we'll, we'll, we don't know how long that's going to take, but... You know, if it stays busy like this and the people are, you know, really interested, then it's definitely going to happen, I think. The New Hall Aquarium is open every day of the week except for Thursdays from 3.30 to 5.30 p.m. And don't forget to visit the New Hall Aquarium Facebook page for more info. For Cougar News, I'm Nick Paverka. And don't forget, fish are friends, not food. If you've ever heard of sensory deprivation, a new float center just opened here in Santa Clarita. And our own Aaron Lanuza got an inside look on the story. Elevate Float Center just opened its doors to the city of Santa Clarita no more than four weeks ago, making this business the single float center within 30 miles. Silence. In the tank, the only noise comes from you. Oh, yo. I mean, First time floater Federico Sade right. is getting a lesson on floating but is worried about entering the tank. And the lights will turn on. No, I'm gonna leave the door open. 10 minutes. I'm not expecting much because I have no idea, but uh, I'll try. I'll let you know when I come out. <laughs> Float tanks have been known to induce a deeper meditation and improve physical and mental processes. The facility carries three 220 gallon tanks mixed with 1,300 pounds of pharmaceutical-grade Epsom salt to float, and a filtration system capable of cleaning the water to one micron smaller than a skin cell. Okay? Trust me, this is relaxing. Okay. Like I said, people don't pay to get tortured. They pay for relaxation. All the new people, I, I want to hear about it every time, you know, because everyone's different. Everyone has something different to say. The first maybe two minutes, this was hurting because, because I could have, you weren't relaxed. I wasn't relaxing. Mm -hmm. Okay, I threw my head back, you know, a little bit more, you know, get more comfortable with it. And then it went away. Federico only lasted nine minutes in the tank, but has an appointment to try again in the next month. This is Aaron Lanuza with Cougar News, and don't forget to check out cougarnews.com for the full interviews. Namaste, America. Drunk driving is a major problem in our nation and a Heart District program is set to help show the dangers of drinking and driving to the teens of their district. I was there to get a closer look. Every 15 minutes, a life is lost as a result of a drunk driving accident. And at West Ranch High School, they hope to prevent that with the Every 15 Minutes program. Uh, every 15 minutes, a student is removed from a class. We make an announcement on, the, on our West Ranch TV, put a picture up on West Ranch TV of the students being removed, and that will go on for the, for the whole morning. Eventually, the upperclassmen are brought up here to a live reenactment of a drunk driving accident. Well, we have all the emergency units roll in, and they do, it's a full-on, real uh, crash, and they do everything they would do at a normal, if they were coming into a, a real crash. For some students and parents, this event can hit very hard. Um, the thought of having the policeman call you or come to your home that morning to notify you that your child 
was in an accident and didn't make it. Um, it's just something that every parent hopes never happens to them. That when you drink and get in a car, it's, it's not just you driving home, it's the fact that you not only could get yourself hurt, but you could also get other people in your car hurt, or you could even kill someone in another car. It has nothing to do with what you're doing that night. And just to really take responsibility for what you're doing and to understand there are consequences to the actions you're taking. I mean, relatively speaking, 67 plus percent of all fatal collisions involve a teen. Uh, that being known and that being said, they still only make up 4% of the driving population. So those are horrible statistics. A statistic that they can hopefully reduce with this program. Today has been a really tough day for all of us. For Cougar News, I'm Skylar Barty. So Skylar, is your tie white and gold or blue and black? Reyna, what do you think? You know what, it looks white and gold to me, but maybe we should take this debate to the internet. Is the dress blue and black or gold and white? This was the question that sent the social media sphere into a viral frenzy. Initially posted to Tumblr by 21-year-old Scottish folk singer Caitlin McNeil after having a disagreement amongst her friends on the color of the dress. So she took to the internet for help, and to her surprise, they provided no solution because everyone was on the fence. This dress had fashion gurus, scientists, and even celebrities stumped. So can you tell me, what color is this dress? Well, I guess the world will never truly know. A dream is a wish your heart makes. And for most of us, that dream will come true when we see Cinderella brought to life on the big screen. Hollywood North Entertainment news host Monique Urquidez had a ball of a time at the premiere over the weekend. So let's check it out. Follow the journey of young Ella, whose mother has just recently passed away. This leaves her father to remarry her new stepmother that brings along her two daughters, who will be Ella's new stepsisters. So I play Anastasia, the pretty stepsister, although uh, although neither of them are really that pretty, not, uh, definitely not on the inside. Um, and it was, oh, it was amazing playing the sort of play the double act with Sophie McShearer who plays Drizella and they're kind of they're silly and they're over the top and they're they're mean but it's only because they're just they have such a low self-confidence that kind of oozes out of them you can't help but feel sorry for them too. They're all looking at you. Believe me, they're all looking at you. Where there is kindness, there is goodness. And where there is goodness, there is magic. I mean, who doesn't love Cinderella? Everybody wants to be here, yeah. I know, I think that there's so many incredible people here tonight, and I feel like everybody shows up for the Cinderella premiere, so it's cool. I grew up watching it, and I haven't seen the movie in years, so I'm excited to see it. This is such a classic movie, and to see it brought to life in such a um, spectacular manner is going to be really exciting to see. With a few mice, a pumpkin, a glass slipper, and a little magic, a princess is brought to life. Are you looking for this? Be sure to check out Cinderella on March 13th at a theater near you. For more entertainment news, be sure to subscribe to Hollywood North's Entertainment YouTube. Prolific actor, film director, photographer, and singer-songwriter Leonard Nimoy passed away at the age of 83 of pulmonary disease. Best known for his iconic role as Spock in the Star Trek franchise, the character Nimoy played had a significant cultural impact and won Nimoy three Emmy nominations. Nimoy may be gone, but fans believe his memory will live long and prosper. And that will do it for this edition of Entertainment. I'm Raina Harvey. Back to you guys. Thanks, Thank you very Raina. much, Raina. Thank you for having me. Last Wednesday, Placerita Canyon unveiled major renovations to their nature center. Austin Westfall went over to check it out. Placerita Canyon is known for its campgrounds, hiking trails, wild plant and animal communities, and its nature center, which has recently gone through some changes. We just finished uh, renovating our museum and a little bit of our classroom, our courtyard, and our bird observation deck. Maori tells us that in their courtyard, they have renovated the tortoise habitat, doubled the size of their bird enclosures, 
and added two additional bird enclosures. The bird observation deck has installed new spotting scopes, a wall aquarium, which will soon house a three-spine stickleback, and a mammal room for Chester the opossum. Furthermore, the classroom features a new giant wall mural, which cycles through a day in the canyon. All that you see behind us is all brand new. We used to have cages for the animals, or we would have the animals set out by themselves, but these are all in a setting now. The wall mural is impressive, but it's only a fraction of the new exhibits at the center. The museum and the mural is all new exhibits, new taxidermy and new models and you know, real, really pretty stuff. After experiencing all that is new at the Nature Center, I got a chance to view their weekly animal show, which featured some of their furry, feathery, and scaly critters. For a full schedule of all of Placerita's programs, including the animal show, you can visit their website at placerita.org. All of their programs are free of charge, and they're fun for the whole family. For Cougar News, I'm Austin Westfall. Learning 1,000 miles away from home, these students see their education in a different perspective. Laura Pickler tells us more. It's just another ordinary school day. But what if your day at school was thousands of miles away from home? Hi, I'm Sai. I'm from Tokyo, Japan. International student Sai has been here for a year and a half. And so far, she loves it. Awesome. <laughs> I like uh, friendly people and super comfortable weather in winter, um, easygoing system. Hopefully I'm going to transfer to four-year university and graduate from the university and then get a job at the hotel in Los Angeles. But the transition to a new country isn't always as smooth. I'm still in a culture shock. <laughs> um, because it's totally different from the place where I come from. When asked why, his answer was straightforward. People working like machines, waking up every day in the morning, I mean sharp at 7 or whenever they have to leave, and go to work, come back, eat, go to sleep. That's how it goes on. I mean, people don't have time for each other. One wonders if it's even possible to adapt. It depends on the person, but for me, since I'm from the Middle East, so. I don't think so, I can adapt here. I'll just get my degree, go back. It's easy to understand that Mirza is tied to his country. I really miss my family, and that's where my heart is, and my heart is in my hometown, and that's Medina. While Mirza's future might not be in America, Sai knows that hers is, and she's taking her American education one step at a time. For Cougar News, I'm Laura Pichla. Over at the Japan Foundation in Los Angeles, a new exhibition arrived featuring 24 different photographers. What makes this exhibition special, however, is that 15 of those photos are the works of COC students. Brandon Iriarte tells us more. Exposed to more than hundreds of viewers, these are only a couple of photos by photography students here at COC. Over at the Japan Foundation in Los Angeles, an exhibition based on the style of Miki Gohara, a professional photographer, features images from several COC students. And it was all possible thanks to a collaborative effort between Pierce College, the Japan Foundation, and COC's photography department. The way the exhibition started out was that there was a master class by Makito Ohara. At the exhibition, uh, Naomi Takasu, who is the director of the Japan Foundation, offered the opportunity for the students of the schools to go out, take the pictures, and then have an exhibit space down at the Japan Foundation's gallery. Lee White, an adjunct photography instructor at COC, took up the challenge of organizing the meetings between the collaborators as he brought the exhibition to life. This exhibition contains work from students both at Pierce College as well as COC, who were inspired by Mikiko Hara's snapshot-style photography. Her philosophy of snapshot uh, picture-taking, which is where she's not looking through the camera, but she's using the camera to capture moments and letting the camera itself tell the truth. The exhibition was a major success for these COC students, as they managed to hold 15 of the 24 selected images. An achievement worth noting, as an opportunity like this is rare to come by for college students.
this is a really good example of the community college working with the community to give a, the students an opportunity to, to learn and grow. This is a very rare opportunity for our students to have such a wonderful public place to display their work, especially based on the inspiration from another culture. The exhibition is being held until March 6th. For Cougar News, I'm Brandon Uarte. As the 19th century ended, Native Americans were pushed to be absorbed as rapidly as possible into the dominant society. Photographer Peggy Fontenot is capturing the strength of Native Americans to survive as individuals and tribes in an art exhibition at the Newhall Library. Jamie Broadway gives us a closer look. I'm Jamie Broadway with Cougar News, and I'm here at the Newhall Library to take a look through the lens of Peggy Fontenot with her interpretation of the indigenous people and their fight to survive as individuals and as tribe members. Social issues impact us whether or not we choose to get involved. We can record through photography, what is happening around us for the purpose of documentation. Or we can photograph social injustices to tell a story or give someone a voice. Photography, when brought to us in a collection, can bring a heightened sense of awareness that on our own we may not have recognized. It can cause us to look at things in an emotional way, a clinical way, scientifically, or in a way that might provoke change. As the 19th century ended, the prevailing view among the non-Native Americans was that Native Americans should be absorbed as rapidly as possible into the dominant society. So many people have a misconception of who Native people are. They look at me and they don't think that I'm Native. And what I wanted to do is to show all the different sides of Native people. We're not just people that wear headdresses or the a uh, stereotypical movie image of what a native person is. And don't forget to check out Surviving Assimilation through the lens of Peggy Fontenon. The exhibit will be on display until June 5th. That's all for now. I'm Jamie Broadway for Cougar News. COC's ASL Club organized a special performance at the PAC. Our own Robert Spallone has more. Pulling off a one-man show isn't easy. Without using a voice, it seems nearly impossible. Tonight, we have a very special guest. His name is Robert DeMeo. He is a deaf actor from the East Coast. Uh, he's an ASL educator. He's also, um, he also travels around the country doing the show that's going on tonight, which is called Me Hear None. Ticket sales from DeMeo's self-written show will be benefiting COC's American Sign Language Club. We're just fundraising for the club to continue hosting and doing events as we have been doing for the entire year. And it's also our goal to set aside and create a scholarship for a deaf or hard of hearing student. The show itself features many different comedic techniques to keep the crowd engaged. He was really interactive with the crowd, had a lot of volunteers, had gave a lot of feedback and played off the, what people's reactions were, so it was really good in that way. Robert DeMaio may not have heard the sound of the applause during the night, but it doesn't take an expert in sign language to understand the audience's appreciation. <laughs> Robert Spallone, Cougar News. Still to come on Cougar News, Sam I Am didn't eat green eggs and ham, but see what Dr. Seuss served up for Santa Clarita. Also, COC hosted its very first swim meet. Don't go anywhere. Hey, this is T-Boz at TLC. This is Batman. I'm Michael C. Morona. And I'm Danny Tamarelli. Hi, this is Ming Chen. This is Mike Zapsik. Hi, it's Louie Anderson. I'm Weird Al. I'm Florence Henderson. And you're watching. And you're watching. And you're watching. And you're watching. And uh, you're watching. And you lucky people are watching Cougar Arr, News. Cougar, Cougar news. news. Cougar News. Cougar News. Cougar News. You're watching Cougar News. And I'm a cougar. Stay tuned. Mardi Gras is time for celebration, beads, and live music. But Santa Clarita has used this holiday to promote healthy living. Chantel uh, de Aguila has all the details. 
In preparation for the LA Marathon, the Mardi Gras Marathon here in Santa Clarita allows students to ride a 5 10K fun run while raising funds for the SOAR program. SOAR provides a fully, fully supported training experience, so we pay for all their marathon registration fees, all their race registration fees, shoes, uniforms, transportation, all that stuff is covered by us. So. Gloomy weather couldn't stop these participants from running in today's race. Their hard work and dedication will all be for a great cause. Yeah, I mean, the course is, pretty, is a pretty quick course. Um, just a few, uh, the only uh, tough part was maybe the, the bridges going over the paseos. There's probably about five or so bridges head across, um, but other than that, it was a very fast course. Runners were awarded prizes, but everyone would agree the most rewarding prize was paying it forward to youth runners and promoting a healthier lifestyle. For Cougar News, I'm Chantal Deligula. Dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. Students took to the gymnasium over at the Santa Clarita Sports Complex to not only dodge balls, but dodge drugs as well. The Drug Free Youth and Town Club recently held their third annual Dodge Drugs Dodgeball Tournament over at the Santa Cruz Sports Complex. Both junior high and high school teams competed in a night full of fun and competition with the goal of promoting a drug free environment. The tournament brought in over 100 spectators as they watched schools compete against each other. It's great. I think it's great. I think it's great that we have families, kids, brothers and sisters. We have teachers, school administrators. It's a really great experience for the people that participate in the fight, but for the community as a whole. West Ranch and Rio Norte were the winners of the tournament, who were rewarded with medals and a trophy. The Castaic Aquatic Center just got approved to put in an Olympic-sized pool. Austin Preciado has more. The Cache Stake Aquatic Center just approved to put in a $7.6 million pool. I talked to one of the lifeguards there and they seemed pretty excited. Uh, my name is Tyler Pearson. I'm a lifeguard here for LA County uh, at the Cache Stake Pool. Uh, we're actually really excited. We're going to have a 50 meter pool built and uh, you know, it'll bring a lot of attention to Cache Stake. Uh, you know, because we do offer four different sports, uh, water polo, swim team, dive team and synchronized swimming uh, and it'll be a great addition because we'll be able to have more water time uh, you know and and it'll be a great benefit to cast uh, so we can have more people come in and have fun and uh, you know hang out over the summer construction for the pool is expected to start in December and be completed by August of 2016 this has been Austin Preciado reporting for Cougar News a high-speed motorcycle accident almost cost a local skateboarder his life. Chris Pacheco has more. Mike Franklin, also known as Flo and Owen, was a former professional skateboarder here in Santa Clarita who was sponsored by many different companies. But on March 14, 2010, all of that changed due to a high-speed motorcycle accident. I was on my Harley uh, going down solar dab on my house. And, uh, turning left to go to the bank, the light turned red, so I go to turn left, so I go, you know, the yield on the left hand turn. Uh, some lady didn't see me, just jetted through the uh, light, T-boned me at 50 miles per hour, flew 65 feet before I hit the ground. When I hit the ground, uh, I broke my neck, fractured my skull, I had brain bleeding, brain swelling, and then my leg was completely destroyed. Owen was not alone in his recovery. Friends of his, an athlete recovery fund, teamed up to raise money for Mike's return. All the skateboard companies that uh, like companies into skateboarding that uh, I've made relationships through skating professionally and all that just came through and yeah, it just came together for me, man. It really did a cool thing. We had like a, a skate park, like fastest run wins kind of contest, uh, best trip thing. Basically, like kids just got together and got to skate. Mike is now back on a skateboard and continues to skateboard every day. If you would like to read more about his story, you can visit grindtv.com or skateboarding.transworld.net. With the latest from Cougar News, I'm Chris Pacheco. Antonio, what's going on with sports at COC? I'll tell you about sports at COC. I'll start off with baseball first. Cougar baseball has been doing quite right, starting Tuesday with a 7-5 record, looking to add more in the win column as they took on Antelope Valley College at home. We pick up the game in the top of the fifth with Colin Dudley on the mound. Bases loaded and two outs. Connor Arnold hits a routine ground ball to shorts up Jose Haros, who boots the play and is late with the throw to give up the go-ahead runner. 
Up next, uh, next batter up, and Dudley gets to how to swing in to finish the inning, avoiding any more damage. Now, move to the bottom half of the inning after a Cole Burns walk. Pitcher Connor Ardo attempts to pick off Burns, but it sails to the outfield, and Burns is going to run all the way to third. He's going to pass second, turning on the boosters, standing up, putting pressure for the, for, uh, for the, for the Cougars against Antelope Valley College. Dylan Fryer would then come up in the next inning. Dylan Fryer had a big game, three RBIs, including this double right here as he connects against the Antelope Valley pitcher. Boom! Opposite field. Fryer would end up getting the walk-off hit. And, and <laughs> getting the walk-off hit and uh, win 5-4 to four of the final. With baseball, baseball season in full swing, the Cougars are now entering the most important part of their schedule, conference games. Andrew Gold has the latest. With spring right around the corner, COC baseball is in full gear. I had the chance to sit down with pitcher J.C. Cloney and ask him a few questions. Oh, we're doing pretty good. We're currently 7-5, and five, sitting in the top of our conference, of out-of-conference record. I asked, well, what are a few goals for this season? Uh, to win conference, because if we win conference, we get to host the first regional at home, which is big, because uh, everybody knows home field is kind of the major major deal in baseball. It seems like fun and games, but once on the field, it's all business. Our, uh, our hitting is uh, really well. We're doing pretty good. Uh, we have a couple guys that are hitting in the 500s, high 400s, uh, one through nine. Our lineup's doing pretty well. Who are you looking forward to playing most in conference? Uh, Mission, because they, uh, they won conference last year. So if we win conference, we can host the regional and be a top eight seed and then go on to Supers and then state and win a state title for CSC. The Cougars continue league play on Thursday, March 5th at Cypress College at 2 o'clock. With Cougar News, I'm Andrew Gold. Have you ever wondered what it's like to have a taste of your dream? Well, for Chris Talley, he was able to do just that. Our own Yvette Sanchez followed his journey of his first season of professional baseball with the Tampa Bay Rays single-A team and got a glimpse of what it was like. With college graduation in the rearview mirror, Chris Tolley was uncertain of his baseball career, but like he says, by the grace of God, he got the phone call he'd been waiting for. I was done. I, I had, my thoughts were I hung up my cleats. I was retired from baseball. I wasn't going to play any baseball anymore. And uh, out of the blue, uh, the Rays called me uh, needing a catcher and extended spring training. What happened was it was like a catch-22. They needed a catcher, uh, and so they needed someone to be able to uh, kind of filled in the spots and so they they kind of were it was just word of mouth that anybody knew anybody and my name got brought up and that's how it happened the rest is history um, I guess I did something that they must have seen or they must have been impressed with and uh, from then on at the end of the three weeks they wanted me to go to uh, uh, New York for the New York Penn League uh, I play on their team their short season A team out there with his first season of professional baseball behind him, Chris was anxiously waiting the call back from the Renegades. I got to sit down and talk to him and see where he stands with the Renegades and what he's doing now. Um, I just got called a little while ago. To, I actually got released from the Tampa Bay Rays, so that's kind of what I've been up to. been debating a lot about whether I should continue on in professional baseball. It was nothing that I had imagined it would be. Uh, in some senses, it wasn't what I expected. Then again, it, it offsets itself because being able to see kids come up to you and, and have them look at you like you are their model, that they, they want to get to your level at some point, that's just, you know, that steals your heart. <laughs> you, you know, you're on, the, you're on the field and you're seeing a kid with a brightened eyes be able to see you play baseball. See? Chris sees himself inspiring young kids to be amazing baseball players and amazing scholars. For Cougar News, I'm Yvette Sanchez. Moving on to softball now, in which the Lady Cougars have been clawing their way up the ranks, winning six of their last seven meetings, and currently hold a 7-2 record with one tie, and look to keep the hot streak rolling as they take on Antelope Valley College tomorrow in the Lady Cougars' first conference game of the season. From the diamond to the diving board, the COC 2015 swim season has, be has just begun. This is Georgia Rios with more. This past Friday, our own COC swim team competed in their first conference meet at the Aquatic Center. We met up at the meet and talked with the coaches and swimmers to see what they're looking forward to this year. Very excited about the upcoming season. We've got a lot of potential to do well in conference this year and uh, 
Go Cougars. The dive team. Uh, this is my third year as head coach, and out of all of my years, the team is the most dynamic, athletic, competitive one I've ever coached. I'm looking forward to a great new swim season, and hopefully we can accomplish many great things this year. Um, I'm looking forward to you know this season. We have a lot of new people, and you know we all try very hard, and we're getting faster and faster. So I'm very, I'm looking forward to the end of the season. Today marks the first of the COC Swim Team Swim Meets. The next swim meet will be March 20th at Citrus Valley. This is George Rios reporting for Cougar News. Back on the hardtop now, COC men's basketball quickly exit playoff contention, losing to LA Harbor College last week. COC trailed 13-4 before tying it 20 apiece in halftime. Unfortunately, the Cougars were behind most of the second half and ended up losing 60-46. They finished with a regular season record of 15-13, Col Coley Apse and Tulio Perry have been named first team all Western State Conference honorees, as well as Ricardo Greaves receiving an honorable recognition as well. Speaking of honorees, the COC women's basketball had received some themselves. Fres freshman Monica Friedel and sophomore Kima Russo both took all star conference honors. Friedel averaged a team high 14 points and 9 rebounds per game, with 41 blocks this season. The Lady, Cougars could fail to, the Lady Cougars would fail to reach the postseason for the first time in 22 seasons, however. The experience gained by Friedel, the Lady Cougars' future looks bright for the 2015-2016 campaign. Thanks, Antonio. That was really good. Thank you, man. Hey, no problem, guys. On the birthday of one of America's most iconic writers, volunteers around the nation read aloud to kids in the annual Read Across America. Brandon Ariarte tells us about Dr. Seuss Day. I do not like great eggs and ham. <laughs> Plenty of laughs were had during a reading of Green Eggs and Ham as National Read Across America, or Dr. Seuss Day, makes its way over to Fair Oaks Ranch Community School. The unofficial holiday, created by the National Education Association, takes place annually on Dr. Seuss's birthday, as thousands of kids enjoy some of his memorable stories. SCV TV's own Dave Caldwell was among uh, other readers over at Fair Oaks Ranch as he volunteered to read aloud the classic not Green Eggs and Ham. Not on a tray, not in a car, not in a tree. I do not like the sub, you see. <laughs> other locals volunteered as well for Dr. Seuss Day. We have about 27 readers today, um, and over the years, we're very lucky we've had hundreds and hundreds of readers. With the goal of creating a nation of readers, Dr. Seuss Day has been important for both students and teachers, as the impact of Dr. Seuss extends beyond his books. This event, I think, is memorable for the kids. They take year after year, um, kind of lighting that fire of literacy with them. Um, the little kids have their doors decorated. The kindergartners are eating green eggs and ham, um, so that they love the day. And we happen to have a literacy week um, kicking off today with Dr. Seuss Day. For Cougar News, I'm Brandon Uriarte. That does it for the di this edition of Cougar News. I'm Dana Nori. Remember, you can catch us on the web at cougarnews.com. And I'm Skylar Barty. You can also send us news tips and story ideas to our Twitter handle at COC underscore Cougar News. And remember to turn your clocks forward Sunday for Daylight Savings Time. Have a good night, everyone. <laughs>